<clears throat> okay, what we have is a John Deere uh, 2355 tractor. Has a loader attachment. Uh, four wheel drive. We're starting to disassemble. We're going to split the tractor. And it needs a clutch. So I'm going to try to document this for people that are interested in doing it themselves. It's equipped with the sound guard cab, <clears throat> which I think is going to make splitting the tractor uh, a little more challenging. So we've already taken the loader off. Uh, some of the side covers, the hood. You have John Deere 2355. The tractor was picked up at auction last week. Uh, State of Massachusetts Department of Public Health. They used it in Jamaica Plain in the city mostly for loading a sander with salt, which is too bad because they uh, did a number on the floor. You can see the rust. It's actually, you got a hole here. And underneath, uh, there's substantial rust on the linkages. It took me about three hours just to free up the foot pedal on the uh, throttle. Uh, so, you know, purchased the tractor at auction, $9,000, knowing it was going to need clutch work. Uh, I think I said earlier, 2,500 hours. It, it also had a rusted brake line. Uh, here's the door to the cab. I have the panel of glass to put back in it. But as you see here, it says uh, brake line leaks needs clutch work and it certainly does tractor runs good starts up four-wheel drive three-point hitch PTO all that works it's all sound all solid I uh, was trying to test it out as far as making sure it was a clutch the clutch master cylinder has been replaced Give it a shot here. So as I just demonstrated, even in the lowest gear, you can uh, stop the tractor forward motion by applying the brakes and the um, RPM doesn't really drop. That's an indication that the clutch is slipping. The uh, high-low on, high, on the transmission works fine. And uh, the clutch disengages fine, it just won't engage. So. According to the service bulletin in the manual, uh, you technically don't have to remove the sound guard cab, but after speaking with the local Padula brother, John Deere dealer, he recommends that you at least jack the cab up a couple inches uh, to get at everything. So next video we're going to remove the loader mounts, battery box, probably try to prop up the cab. Unfortunately everything's severely rusted as far as the uh, cab mounts go. I was able to replace the brake line that was leaking and it's a hydraulic brake uses transmission fluid on a wet disc. I bled them out. Brakes are fine. PTO works good. Three-point hitch goes up and down. Like I said everything's functional except the clutch. So I kind of knew that, you know, a bit appropriately, and my limit was 10,000. 
on the tractor. I figure you put a clutch in it, do some body work. I already painted up the wheels and tires. Of course, that's a simple fix. But being a low hour tractor and second cutting approaching, I figure I'd try to get this thing split, put a clutch in it by, by the weekend. So I'll make another video and then I'll try to figure out how to edit everything together and we'll go from there. Okay, thanks for watching. Okay, YouTube, here's uh, part two of the John Deere tractor split. So here it is, Labor Day weekend, and we got to work, and we're able to split the tractor and remove the clutch. So here you have it two pieces. So this John Deere uh, 2355 has the sound guard cab and that presented uh, some unique problems when it came to splitting the tractor. Primarily these two upper bolts uh, here and here on the track. It's very difficult to get uh, a breaker bar to loosen these two top ones up. So what I did is I cut a hole on the side with my grinder and I got in there and I was able to uh, get this bolt off. Um, prior to that I took all of the uh, loader linkage, the loader arms off, the side mount supports, both battery boxes, undid the uh, air conditioning lines, the throttle linkage, the shutoff linkage, the three hoses on the top, the hydraulic for the brakes. On this side, undid uh, the hydraulic lines. For the power steering uh, and the heater hose. Um, what I discovered is I was able to get this top bolt out, but then I got to this side and I didn't really think it through and I realized I had all this emergency brake linkage in the way, foot pedal for the throttle. So went to plan B and that was to jack the cab up and it was actually very easy to do. I should have done that in the beginning. I don't recommend cutting a hole on the side like I did on the other side. That's not the way to go. Uh, by taking the battery boxes off you gain access to this cab mount and it was, uh, it was actually a lot easier to do it that way. I was able to put a jack on the floor right here and I lifted it up about six inches. All of the steering linkages, um, clutch lines, and all of the controls for the rock shaft were able to stay intact. And I had plenty of room to get behind it, you know, from underneath and I was able to get that top bolt out. So if anyone is in, in the process of doing the same, that's, that's what I would recommend. Uh, you take the battery boxes off, take the two front cap mounts out, it's pretty simple, a couple bolts, and then just simply jack the cab up. That's the way to do it. Uh, in the John Deere manual, they have a specialty tool that supposedly you can get in from this access panel on the floorboard. Um, but you got to find your way up into here. It must be a series of universals. I, I don't know. But I think the easiest way to do it is the two front cab mounts. Now the rear cab mounts stayed intact. I didn't touch them. But you can see they're rubber mounted. You know, so you got quite a pivot point. You can easily get four to six inches of clearance. Uh, the main culprit was definitely the clutch. The clutch disc is wiped out. You can see here, 
there's nothing left of it. Uh, the flywheel, I'm going to turn the flywheel. That was pretty scarred up. Pilot Baron, I'll replace that. And I also noticed, and it's probably due to the fact that the clutch was slipping for so long, there was so much heat built up that the rear main seal is just starting to leak. So while the tractor's apart, now's the time to do it. So I'll I'll start get a rear main seal, pilot baron, clutch assembly. And here is the hydraulically actuated uh, slave cylinder. So I'm going to replace that as well. It doesn't make any sense to I mean it's not leaking, it's functioning fine, but yeah, you, know, you go through all this work, you put the tractor back together. You know, six months a year down the road, this, the slave cylinder goes, and you got to split it again. So, I'll just take the extra expense and uh, do it now. So basically, there you have it. Um, I was very fortunate. A friend of mine let me use his wheel loader. And I was able to cradle the engine with these straps. And once the bolts, one, two, three, four, five, six bolts... You know, it, it was easy to separate and just, you know, block it up and walk it apart. Uh, so here it is Labor Day weekend. I hope to get it back together next weekend. I'll spend this week getting all the necessary parts. Hopefully that won't take too long. And we'll put it back together. And then we'll go to part three, which will be, uh, you know, hopefully having the tractor together running and everything working. So thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, so here we have part three. Uh, we got the tractor back together. It didn't go easy, but she's running. Give it a, a test spin. So there you have it. Uh, the difficult part of the reassembly <coughs> was this particular clutch 
had uh, two clutch discs, one for the transmission and one for the continuous PTO. The uh, continuous PTO disc comes already inside the clutch pack, if you will. But then you have to actually put the transmission clutch disc up against the flywheel and then bolt the pressure plate on and try to remain or try to get the alignment. But the problem I had was the clutch alignment tool that I ordered from the dealer didn't come. So I was faced with taking a stick and whittling it down and trying to improvise and come up with my own clutch alignment tool. And that was the difficulty because the last, oh, you know, three quarters to one inch bringing the two halves together was nearly impossible. After three hours of jiggling and pry bars and jacking one part up, one part down, and then <clears throat> finally deciding, okay, we're going to split it and check the pilot bearing to make sure it didn't pop out. Uh, as I got up, it went pop, and it just came together. So I think it would have been a lot easier had we had the clutch alignment tool. And I would definitely recommend the investment because it, it's two different splines. The uh, the clutch disc spline is 15. There's a 15 spline clutch disc for the transmission and a 23 spline clutch disc for the PTO. Uh, unfortunately, the first clutch they sent me was the wrong one. They sent me a two stage clutch. And you would think that if you had two clutch discs, it would be a two stage clutch, but apparently not uh, because it's a hydraulic slave. Um, uh, cylinder. The even though it has two discs, it doesn't qualify in the John Deere book as a dual stage clutch because the PTO is continuously engaged uh, through the hydraulics. If you step on the clutch, the PTO still spins. On a dual stage clutch, if you press the clutch pedal halfway down the tractor will stop the PTO will stay engaged then when you fully depress the pedal both the PTO and uh, the transmission are disengaged so uh, my local John Deere dealer as well as myself got an education on that that's what delayed the process it took almost three weeks to get the reman clutch <clears throat> the first one ten days it was the wrong one the second one was a little bit quicker and then it took me a week to uh, you know get some free time to reassemble it so there you have it it's it's running it's back together I gotta do the cosmetics I've got to replace the, the side windows I've got the door I'm rebuilding the door I'll put the loader arms back on uh, all in all you know it, it I learned a lot and I think with the sound guard cab as I said earlier the best thing to do is take the battery boxes off remove the cab mount and then you can literally pick the cab up and get at that bolt right there, which is the tough one to get to. And uh, once, you, once you're there, you get that bolt out here, more than halfway home. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, or if you're trying to do it yourself, um, it definitely it can be done, but order and purchase the clutch alignment tool. It's very difficult to find. The other tool, that, especially tool that they have, actually goes in this little inspection hole here it's a plastic cover it gives you access to the ring gear and I believe it must be some type of a gear with a uh, where you can put a ratchet or something that allows you to rotate the engine which further aids in aligning aligning the clutch so thanks for watching and uh, don't don't forget to like it thanks